So this morning, are you excited to have your ID book? This is not an ID book, but for the next six weeks it will be. And uh, Alex, you and Jude, I just want to say in the back table, this, you're actually on the naughty corner, we are watching you. So um, if you don't have a book, just quickly wave your hand, we'll get one to you, but you should have one. Uh, um, oh, there's a couple here, where's Jade? Thank you. You're supposed to pay. Yeah, you, you can pay if you want to. That'll be great. We'll cover the, the cost and we'll sort that out afterwards. Um, if you open it to page one, it says Sunday Notes. Have a look there. And I suggest the first thing you do is write your name in it. Unless you're writing notes for your wife and you secretly want to swap the books, then uh, just put your name on it because it'll be your notes. And that's where you fill in your notes. And uh, you will see there is also um, midweek kind of spaces where you fill it in we'll explain that as we go and then there's some devotionals at the back so today you should only be on page one all right and that is where you're going to fill in your notes from this sunday morning preach <laughs> pens i'm sure jade loves stationery she can dig in the office and get you a pen as well i know we don't you know this is unusual we usually do everything electronically i know but for these six weeks, it's cool. Put this bag, uh, put this book in your bag, carry it with you, because we're really trusting God to do something in our lives, in our hearts um, this week. And, and what's cool about this is you've got your Sunday notes, you've got your midweek kind of discussions, and you've got a, your devotionals all in one. It'd be great for you to be able to look back over these six weeks and trust God that He would have done something in your life. Is that cool? <laughs> no you can mark yourself or you can ask michelle to mark yours and see how that goes but it's cool right we 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 want to be intentional that's the big deal and so we just want to get everybody on the same page so a lot of effort has gone into this the city hill guys have helped us with this as well and so we're grateful father we thank you this morning as we listen to your word we all just put our hearts to attention. We realize that we might have heard some of these things many times. Some of us might have heard this for the very first time this morning. But what we do know is, God, that you are still speaking. And with all our questions and all our struggles and all the things that we're going through, we believe in your ability to be able to reach us, to be able to come after us with your mercy and your goodness and reach us at the point where we're at right now for those that are confused Lord will you help us will you speak direction for those that are feeling overwhelmed right now will you bring courage for those of us Lord God who who just all over the place will you bring clarity will you bring strength will you bring direction as we this morning just put ourselves at attention to listen to Jesus, great master, our great king. We turn our eyes on you and we pray for you to speak to us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is uh, all the Sunday preachers will follow on to each other and so it's good for you to be here on these six weeks to hear that. This morning's one is called, Where Do I Want to Get To? And... Um, if you've ever watched Alice in Wonderland, there is this one scene where Alice asks the, the cat, uh, which way should I go? And the cat asks, well, it very much depends on where do you want to get to? And she answers and says, well, it doesn't really matter. And then he said, well, it doesn't really matter then which way you take. And so if you're living your life without purpose, it's like this boat floating on the ocean that's rudderless. If you don't know where you want to get to, it's pointless talking about which way should I take. And so this morning, I'm asking you not just to, to think about the series as something that, you know, is just a, a whole lot of information. But I'm challenging you to ask yourself, where is it that you want to get to? Or maybe even... Where is it that you should be with your life? Where is it that you and I should be? Uh, uh, what is the place that we should be living our lives at and how should we be living it? And so this morning, 
Um, I'm going to attempt to just speak about our main verse that's going to follow through in the series and make three main points there and then talk about three black holes that will take you away from the purposes of God. And then we're going to look at three pivotal questions. The key verse that a lot of this stuff is going to hinge on is in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. And I'll read the NIV. It says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. What a scripture. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus not just to be but also to do good works and not just any good work but work that God himself had somehow prepared for us to do. Isn't it amazing? God creates the work for us but he also creates us for the work and this is a key scripture that we want to work through the first point i want to make when we read that scripture is that we need to take note of who has done the initial work it's god himself and uh, for us to understand some of this i might need to mention two other kind of worldviews because it depends on how you you see life um, how you would answer this question of purpose if you've been exposed to something of the the eastern kind of thinking um, you'll feel that like the material world doesn't really have much purpose to it in fact i could quote krishna here from some of his writings where he says we are deluded into taking ourselves seriously only because we're caught up in a world of illusion the fact that we think that we have some special purpose in this material world is the problem itself it leads to desires that perpetuate the attachment that keeps us bound to the wheel of suffering see what he's saying there is absolutely no purpose in this material world in fact what you should be doing the only way to find some kind of relief from suffering is to detach from this material world so you have to find a state where you're completely detached from the world um, on a website where two authors asked a buddhist priest um, could name him but I probably wouldn't do it justice they asked him about this question of purpose and he answered like this there is no purpose in your life the Buddhist approach is you're born you die you're born you die like physics like dominoes you knock one and they keep falling that way for individual human beings there is no purpose and so this worldview kind of from an eastern perspective is that there is no meaning it's just this endless repetition and the only way you can get out of it is actually to detach from the world now you might feel like that sometimes when you're looking for purpose in the world around you and in life you might just ask yourself this question what exactly is the purpose of all this it just keeps on going and actually, you might be feeling today like, all I want to do is detach, disconnect from the world. Then there's a secular kind of uh, a worldview that's different to that. Um, uh, it kind of answers this question of what's the purpose of individuals by saying, well, your purpose is whatever you want it to be. Bertrand Russell says, each one of us are these weary unyielding atlases carrying on our shoulders the world of our own making and so secular kind of worldview is like man you must create your own purpose find something and make it whatever you want to be and again maybe this morning you might be starting with yourself or starting with the world and trying to say what's the purpose of all of this actually if i if i start at the world i might feel like actually i just want to completely detach too much pain too much suffering if you start with yourself you might say like okay i've got to let me find something that's a purpose and make it a purpose and create my own purpose and make my own purpose and so i do want to say this morning where do you want to get to will depend on which way you should take 
if you uh, have concluded that our desire for purpose is simply an illusion, then maybe you should follow some of those Eastern masters. But if you are like me that believes actually purpose doesn't start with the world, it doesn't start with me, but it starts with God who did a work in me and because of that I have purpose, then our worldview is different to either of those. We don't create our own purpose, we don't find purpose in, in the world, but actually our understanding purpose un, uh, starts by knowing a loving, powerful, creative God who made me on purpose and for a purpose. Does that make sense to you? Where do you want to get to? If you're open to the possibility that there is a God who made you and created you for a purpose, then I think you're going to love these six weeks. And so we start with that verse, and I'm saying to you, let's remember who did the initial work. God. Without knowing God, there's no sense in asking the question, what's my purpose? The second thing from that verse that we see is that God does a work in us. We are God's handiwork. Can you say God's handiwork? Uh, I haven't heard a come on now, so I'm glad we cured from that. There it came back. We are God's handiwork. You can turn to someone and say, you are God's handiwork. That's what the scripture says. It's, we're not just in this endless kind of repetition of, of, of cycles. We are not just our own creation. We're not made of our own. We are God's handiwork. And so there's two ways in which God kind of creates us. I know in our, in our, in our world we often talk about people who are self-made people, you know. Self-made millionaires, self-made entrepreneurs, self-made. Um, but there's something better than a self-made. It's a God-made person. God's handiwork. God's work evident in who I am and, 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 and in my life. And so there's two ways. Number one, God at the moment when I was born breathed his life into me. Without God who created all things and who, who all life owes its existence to, I would not be breathing. It's his life in me from the moment that I was born and you were born. And so Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. There is something about you that is incredible and amazing. It is something of the work of God. It's from the moment that you were born. God created you. And there's something of his image in your life and my life. If we're going to understand purpose from a biblical point of view, we have to understand that it started with God. Not trying to find our purpose in ourselves or in the world around us, but starting with God. And God has done a work in us. We know that we've been separated from God and His life and His purposes through sin. We understand that. And so just being born, there is the potential to fulfill the purposes of God. But without Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross and removing what stood between God and I, I can never walk into that purpose God has for me. And so it says here, we are, we are God's hand. You were created in Christ Jesus. The second creation that God does in my life is, is causing me to be born again by the Spirit of God. He breathed back into me the Spirit of God. And it's almost like a spiritual or a supernatural creation. The one is a natural one when I'm born, but there's also a spiritual one when Jesus Christ comes into my life and He begins to do this work in me. I know you might not feel special most of the time, but here's the thing. You are because you are His handiwork. You're God's workmanship. It's a creative, loving God, full of wisdom, full of knowledge that, that has caused me to be alive. And secondly, to send His Son so that I may know Him. 
We're still on this, uh, this key verse that the whole purpose series, and if, uh, I hope you're not writing notes for your husband or if you're writing your own, right? Okay, good. The third point I just want to make from this verse is that not only does it start with God, and not only is it about God doing a work in my life, but it's about God doing a work through my life. Isn't that amazing? It says there, he, uh, he, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So not only am I alive because of God, not only has Christ removed my sin from me so that I may know God and this wonderful work of redemption can take place in my life, but also God did that work so that through me He can impact the world around me. And this is where I want to begin to to really just challenge you a little bit to ask these questions to think about it in a way that there is something that God has uniquely set aside for you to do with your life at the time that you're alive right now with your challenges with your gifts with the place where you find yourself in right now so we have some really talented soccer players and I know Socks and welcome. Why your oaks are getting so much uh, attention here this morning? You must be very special. But even with your soccer gifts, God can use that. So there's something about this that you have to understand. As God works in me, the outflow is into the world around me. The outflow of me being here today and Jesus Christ working in my heart. There, there's something of an outflow there's something of a purpose that God has and because he's God he knows in advance what it is that he wants me to do and that gives my life purpose and so this morning I uh, want to remind you it starts with him he's done a work in us and he wants to do a work through us into the world and that's where Ephesians, that scripture is so key. Three black holes that will take us away from the purposes of God. We quickly go through them. And um, someone said that finding your God-given purpose is like a stray planet looking for a bright star to orbit around. You know, it's like earth. As, as big as you think earth is, and as amazing you th uh, as we think earth is, without the sun, life on earth would not be possible. And the sun is like this, this source of light and heat, this kind of stable reference point from which we can orbit around. And you might think that as humanity, hey, we're not influenced by other things. We're not influenced by, we, we're autonomous. But I tend to think that our lives revolve around the things that we think can give us safety and, and you know, um, stability and promise something of it'll be there when you need it most. The problem with a black hole is that it's a star that once emitted light and, and all that, but it's imploded on itself. And now it just sucks everything into itself. And if you get into its gravitational pull, it'll just... How's that for sound effects? Suck you right in. I might swallow the mic. It's amazing, but some of these black holes, I think entire, not only individuals get caught up in this. And I'm saying if you get caught up in this, it will always take you away from the purposes of God. You get it? I'm saying to you, God created you. You have a purpose. God's done a work in you. You have a purpose. God's got work for you to do. You have a purpose. But if we orbit our lives, if we surround our lives and center our lives around these things, we'll get completely sucked in by them and it will keep us away from the purposes of God. And I'm saying to you, we as, as human beings love to orbit around some of these things. Sometimes it's entire families and cultures get sucked up into this. The first one, the first black hole is me, I, myself. Oh, it's the wrong way around. Me, myself, and I. Can you imagine if the earth just revolved around itself? Be an absolute disaster. You know, in this question, which is the best way 
to live. Our Western culture has recently offered us a very good, good answer, which is the best way to live. Well, live for yourself. Live for your fame. Live for your success. This unhindered kind of autonomy. Live for you. Center your life around yourself. Well, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 says that Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that he died for all. And those who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for him who died for them and was raised again. It's amazing that um, the word selfie has only been kind of become a word in the last, the last little while, right? The average 20-something will have taken and published more pictures of themselves than Caesar Augustus had paintings and statues made in his entire lifetime. The focus on self-magnification. And then what begins to happen is we, we kind of begin to project a self that's not really us. We get sucked up into this. Thomas Merton says that a self-centered approach puts us on the doorstep of hell. We live in a generation absolutely absorbed with me, myself, and I. And even though there are thousands of, of social media influencers who herald this method of self-magnification, there is one flaw. You, you struggle to tell the difference between this amazing awesomeness that I project to the world around me and the real me. And it's funny when you begin to orbit around that, you become something that you're not. You're doing all right? If I start orbiting around my little, flimsy, fragile, outward projected self, it's a deep, dark, inward spiral. You know, youngsters these days, I think when they post something on Instagram or whatever else, they don't get enough likes in the first few minutes, they'll take it down. And so we can begin to live and orbit around what we think we should be. And it will always take us away from the purposes of God. Is that all right? I'm talking to the older people on Instagram. Sean, you guys and media influencers. Surely my life was created to orbit around something bigger, something more magnificent, like God himself at the center, giving the light and the energy and the heat and the radiance and the mission to my life rather than my awesomeness. You're doing all right, man. Hallelujah, amen, praise, nothing. Okay. Just, yeah, is a, you're falling asleep or what? The second black hole uh, is material things. And um, we live in a consumeristic age where honestly uh, we struggle with affluenza, you know, we believe if we have enough money and things that we are enough. We think that, you know, my net worth determines my self-worth. If I just have enough things, I'll be enough. This is this mindset. And sadly, um, you know, it's a strange thing, but I've never heard someone on their deathbed ever regret saying, I wish I had more cars, houses, hedge funds, and things. It's amazing when, when, when you have days left of your life, how we realize that all the things that we own kind of turn into dust in our hands. And all the things that we chase after, and all the things that we think we own, that probably own us, just become meaningless at, at that point in your life. Uh, someone said that Rockefeller's accountant, someone asked him once, you know who Rockefeller is, right? He's a very rich dude. Died quite some time ago. They asked his accountant, so how much money did he leave behind? To which the accountant said, all of it. <laughs> if you can't take it with you, true story that. If you can't take it with you, 
And if it can't satisfy you, why do we live our lives as if having more of it is the be all and the end all of everything? How is it that we orbit around that? Because it'll only take us down a deep dark path away from the purposes of God. Jesus said, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of coveting. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. I think it's good to simplify. I'm not saying God doesn't want to bless us. Absolutely God wants to bless us, of course. But we don't want to orbit around that material things. That makes, makes sense to you? We live in a world and a culture that is so caught up in it. And I'm just trying to help us this morning understand if you're going to fulfill this purpose of a loving, wise, creative God that made you unique, that's why you were born. This amazing Jesus who we sang about, who gave his life so that you and I can know this God who created us and walk with him. This same God who, is, who, who knows the time that you'll be alive, the place you'll live, and has prepared something for you to do. If we orbit around these things, they'll draw us away from the purpose that God has for our life. Black hole number three, and then we... We're going to be really short and sweet this morning, and we're going to land this. Black hole number three is the approval of others. Remember, think about the question. This morning we're asking, where is it that you want to be? Where is it that you want to get to? Where is it that you want your life to get to? Is it to that place where you know that you are hitting the target, and you're living for the purpose of this great God that's created you? Well, then we have to decide which is the way that we want to go. And orbiting around these things will pull us away from Him and not closer. Black hole 3 is the approval of others. Now, I'll just be quite vulnerable here. I think we do need the encouragement of significant other people around us. I think we do need some of that. But the problem is if we make it our goal, we give away something that we shouldn't and so um, there's this guy who wrote a book called status anxiety and he says that the approval his name is I'll say it in church it's Alain de Bottom <laughs> now he's a top guy you know that's the only thing with a bottom at the top it's your leg right he writes, um, the approval of others mattered to us because we're afflicted by an uncertainty as to our own value. Think about it. The approval of others mattered to us because we're afflicted by the uncertainty as to our own value. When we don't know our own value, we are subject to the approval of other people. And he goes on to say, as a result, we tend to follow other people's appraisals to play a determining role in our lives and how we see ourselves. Our sense of identity is held captive by the judgment of those we live among. Our sense of identity is held captive by the judgment of those around us. We, we stand and fall at their approval or disapproval you know that if we give someone the power to validate us we also give them the power to invalidate us make sense our sense of being a valid person should come from this consistent son of God around whom we should be centering our lives around orbiting him that we have value because he created us we have value because he gave his son for us we have value because he has a purpose and a plan for us this verse was mentioned in the in the prayer meeting this morning as well galatians 1 verse 10 am i now trying to win the approval of human beings or god Am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be the servant of Christ.
when we discover this beautiful creator who's given us purpose, we understand that at the end of the day, it's only what Jesus thinks about my life that really matters and not everybody else around me. And that, I pray this morning that you would maybe just liberate yourself from some of these black holes. Get out of that orbit. If it's material things we're chasing after, then maybe today we just do a little bit of an assessment. Just simplify our lives. Be grateful for the things, the things that maybe we need and separate them from the things that we, we just want because the world tells us we need them. To maybe this, more liberate, this morning liberate ourselves from this pressure of always living up to other people's expectations, needing their approval to feel valuable within ourselves. And so this morning, if it's not self-magnification or materialism or the approval of others, that is our purpose, then what then is it? And we're going to land with these three questions. And it's good to write them down because throughout this series, this is what we're wanting to try and answer. We run out of space. <laughs> Need a new book. <laughs> this is so short and you run out of space. Make the main things, Steve. Are you? I think Renelle's writing for me. I think she put my name on the book. You don't need more paper. So the first question that we, we're wanting to ask ourselves in this, in this series, so just so you know, this has been put together very intentionally. The material in the book, the, the preachers on Sunday, we, we, we're really putting it together in a way that we're not trying to repeat every Sunday. So every Sunday is unique. And so it would be good for you to get to this and and follow the whole thing through with us but the first question we have to answer is what is God's purpose for all of his children and uh, like in the Old Testament if you are born in Israel in a certain tribe God had already designed the purpose for that nation and for his people before you came along and you are born into it and so we call this the the general purposes of God and for you to understand your individual purpose, you have to understand the general purposes of God. And that Psalm, Psalm 119 verse 32 says, I run in the path of your commands, for you've set my heart free. And it's almost like I want you not to think about your purpose as this little single lane road, but as this massive freeway with many, many, many lanes moving in a certain direction. That's how we live our life. Because God has a destiny for all of His children. And, and when we run in those, we, we begin to figure out what, is, what are the areas that, that, that I can run in as an individual. But it's super important for us to understand God's general purpose for His people. And there are five of them that we're going to work through. Um, the, you probably would find more than that. But five of them over these six weeks that we're going to look at are, are absolutely God's purpose for all of His children. And that we need to begin to run in that direction to begin to find our purpose. Does that make sense? Many people sit and like, God, what's my purpose? Is it this? Is it this? I'm going to try this. I'm going to go there. Our approach these six weeks is not like that. Our approach is like this. Purpose comes from a person and His name is God. And He's created your life for a reason. And He's given His Son, Jesus Christ. And as you allow Jesus to work in you, you will discover that He wants to work through you. And if you will realize what God's purpose for His people here on earth is, you can begin to run in that direction. That's where we're going to start. And so I encourage you to... Um, I know um, there's some people in the UK and stuff online as well. And you guys... Um, can always just follow online if you need to. But I want to encourage the rest of us, pull in on a Sunday. Don't make this a one-off thing. Just come for six weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about those things. The second question we're going to tackle is, what is God's purpose then for me personally or individually? So you can imagine this highway with many lanes and we're all running in the same direction. As we begin to move in God's commands, move in what it is that God has for, for all of His people, we'll begin to figure out, well, there are certain things in my life that really fit well into these lanes and this is where I can run. Uh, again, a scripture that came up this morning, and I know Craig was completely missing it this morning, but anyway. 
Acts chapter 13 verse 36. Now when David served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. Um, it's amazing. That verse, doesn't it hit you? Although David was one of God's children, there was a specific generation that he lived in with specific challenges. And David had specific strengths and gifts and abilities. And God put him in a specific place around specific people because God had a specific purpose for his life. And I want to say for you today, you might want to get out of the people around you, get away from. You might want to detach from life. You, want to, you might want to say, I want to make my own purpose. But if you, like me, have a biblical view on this, that God created you, then we begin to run on this road that God has for all His children. And we begin to say, Lord, maybe there's something specific you've got for me right where I find myself right now. Because you're involved in all of this. And a lot of these things... We're going to work out together in small groups. And so if you look at the back, what will happen is there is a video with a discussion every week that's going to follow on. And those discussions are really geared towards helping you personally find your purpose. And forgive us for some of the photos there, but that's what the people gave us. On those posters, you can... Pick a group if you're not in a group or if you, if you really have a struggle, uh, you can come and chat to us. But we encourage you to work it out together. Have the discussion together because that's how we discover um, our purpose in God. We have the Word of God to give us all those lanes, but we also have the Holy Spirit that can direct us individually and we walk, walk that out together. So in the, in the weeks, you're going to watch the video and then... Have the discussion and fill in the words in your book. Um, get into one of the groups or gather a couple of people um, to see those videos. At the end of the week, we will send them out to you individually. But we encourage you first, if you want to get it fresh, get to one of the groups. The third question we want to answer is then, how, will, how can I fulfill the purpose God has for my life? What's the point of knowing the general purposes of God, the specific purposes of God for your life, but never living it out and never fulfilling that purpose? And so uh, uh, the scripture that Jesus, uh, when Jesus spoke in John chapter 17, he said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. How amazing is that? Jesus said, Father, you sent me. I'm here by your instruction. You've prepared work for me. I'm bringing you glory by finishing the work you've given me to do. And so imagine actually hitting the target for your life. And take us back to where we started. Where is it that you want to be? Where is it that you need to be? For me, I need to be in the place where I'm fulfilling the purposes that God created me for. That's where I want to get to. I realize there are these black holes that want to draw me away from it, but I'm determined. How do I get there? Well, there's 36 week devotional and uh, it starts on... Page 16, is it? Nineteen. Devotional for every day, how's that? You start on Monday, six days. Sunday we together here. Somewhere in the week you meet with your friends to discuss it. Those devotionals are going to help us to... Walk towards what God's purpose for us is. Let me close with this. We are God's handiwork. We are created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
I do want to say this, that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there is no way you can walk in God's purpose without first receiving Him as your Lord and Savior. If God is the one that created you and has a purpose for you, you understand that our sin separated us from ever fulfilling that purpose. It separated us from the one who created us. And that's why Jesus had to come. That's why God had to take on the form of a human being and come and take on the sin of the world on his shoulders. He was the only perfect one who could do that on your behalf. And where you and I should be punished, he took our punishment that we can know God. Who he is, this one that created you for a purpose. And I want to say, before we start serving him and doing these good works, we have to know him. And maybe you've come to this because someone's invited you. Maybe you yourself are, are looking for some, some purpose. I want to say only in Jesus Christ can we find our purpose. Because God made us with this in mind that we may know Him and enjoy Him and serve Him for all eternity. And so in His goodness and His kindness, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you this morning. If you have not done that, to open your heart to Jesus. Can we stand please? Just for a moment, I want to ask you, just to close your eyes, you know, your belongings are safe. We're all good people here. I just here for the first time. I think it's safe. The reason we ask you to close your eyes, not to get weird, is just so we're not distracted by the things going on around us. This is meant to be very, very... the purposes that God has for us and so I want to ask you this morning invite you if you've never opened your heart to this beautiful beautiful person Jesus Christ most kind amazing righteous beautiful beautiful person God himself the son never opened your heart, you've never called Him Lord, I'm going to invite you to do that right now. Simply in your heart saying, Jesus, I know I've, I've fallen short of what I should be. I've broken your law of sin, but thank you that you died on the cross so that if I believe, you know this thing of saving is not our work, it's God's work. Yes, God has prepared works for us, but it's not saving ourselves. God did that work. Jesus said, it is finished. Only Jesus can make me right with God. Only Jesus. Not going to church, not doing good things, not fulfilling religious laws, none of that stuff. Only Jesus. He's a person and maybe today he's knocking at the door of your heart and you need to let him in. For the rest of us, where do you need to be? Which way should you go then? If you're caught up with those things that are pulling you away from the purposes of God, deal with them today. Liberate yourself. Start walking towards the purposes God has for you. Lord, I pray for us. Pray for these six weeks, young and old. 
Let it be a journey, Lord, where we draw closer to you, where we know you in a deeper way than we ever have. Bless your people, Lord, today. Bless your people, Lord. Let your mercy and your goodness follow us. Lord, we find ourselves in a nation, in a country, in a city, drawn into all kinds of other things that are not the purposes of God. May we be the light. May we reflect Jesus Christ to our world around us. You're consistent. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for your provision in our lives. Thank you for your kindness. We love you, Lord. We walk freely. We want to be consistent this year, 2023, Lord. Remind us, consistent. Lord, we're so grateful for what Jesus did on the cross. So amazing. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Well done. You did. You made it. You made it. Now you can have a coffee break. So please, if you, if you haven't got a book, get one from Jade. The 20 bucks is really just so to cover the printing. It's, it's no big deal, so you register. And then see if you can find one of the groups that you can meet with and connect with. Please stay for coffee. God bless you.